you, and Lord. it is in this room for healing. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. All of us need healing. Yes. All of us need yes. to be healed. We're going to show you some things in the word of God today and some perspectives that you probably haven't thought about or maybe you have. But we're just going to bring and shed some light on the truth that God has established I know a lot we hear about the kingdom and and a new order is being established according to the kingdom. But the kingdom order is not a new order. It's the original order. Amen. It is the original order of God. So that's what we came to do this morning. If we could grab, I need some water. If somebody got some water, please, to to grab me some water. Uh, When I tell you, uh, room temp for me is fine. When I tell you, can we just talk for, can we just talk? We just, we just want to talk. When when I tell you that this week has been a challenge, (laughs) it has been a challenge up to, listen, up to this morning, (laughs) up to like 830, like a quarter to nine this morning, it has really been a challenge Uh, on Wednesday uh, when I came in Wednesday, body was hit. We had to teach on Wednesday night, and body was hit on Wednesday night. So I got up, and I, you know, one thing that I, I do, I never allow the enemy to stop me from doing anything that God has ordained. So, so I, I got myself together, and immediately when I got into the Word of God, the power and the strength of God began to come. And on Wednesday, Thursday, battling yesterday, didn't really, uh, you know, still going through some symptoms and my wife. And then this morning she was going, through, I was like, you know, I, I told her, see, I said, um, at any other time I would baby you, but, but this morning I need you to warrior up. I, I, I say, after we get finished, I'll baby you when we get home. But when it's time for ministry, it's time for us to do work now. And see, we have to stand up and see, that's what we have to know when it's time to do work and when it's time to pat, when it's time to pat and when it's time to fluff and oh, baby, it's going to be all right. No, I I need you to man up right now because we got We got some work to do and the enemy is trying to stop it. So we have to get ourselves ready. So we have to talk to each other like that sometimes. And, you know, there'll be times that we'll talk to each other and we'll just kind of pacify each other. That's the word I use this morning. I say, baby, I can't pacify you this morning. You know, I got to speak to what's what's uh, uh, going on in your body so that you can get up and do what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. So thanks be to God. We're here. Amen. We are here this morning and we're excited to be here this morning, excited to share the word of God with you and to share the truths of the kingdom of God that I believe that's going to really, really impact your life and influence Although we're not professionals, we are ones that have submitted ourselves to God and that we have and we say that we have learned over the years through experience how to be in covenant and relationship with each other. But that is not what qualifies us to do what we're doing today. What qualifies us to do what we're doing today is that God called us to it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, because we can go out and get all kind of education. I know y'all go seek all the educated people you want to. You can. That's fine. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I believe that educated people are good. I've went. I've gone back to school myself and 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 got uh, a degree and 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 all of that. And I was very proud of it. But I know in whom I serve, and I know what's greater than the pl- diploma that's on the wall is the God that I serve. And I know that the wisdom and the knowledge and the revelation that God gives is greater than any knowledge that I can get from or gain from man. So that's why when we when we talk about relationship, we have to understand that if we're going to have successful relationship, we have to go back to the one that created it or instituted it. I I can't go to uh, the professional because the professional learned from somebody else who learned from somebody else and who knows where they got their information from. Right. So if I'm going to have a successful relationship with my wife, then I have to go back to the one that instituted marriage from the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me slow down. 
So let us, we're going to talk a little bit. Let's tell you, let's tell them a little bit about ourselves first. We're going to tell you a little bit about ourselves and we're going to get that. So, uh, you know, because I know a lot of people, uh, they get stuck on, you know, people and they get stuck on uh, famous and fame. But I tell you right now, I'm famous in the kingdom. <laughs> if I, if I, if I'm not, somebody, you ought to know that you got to know that you're famous in the kingdom of God. Amen. If you never make it to whatever the world call famous, you're famous in the kingdom of God. God chose you. He called you by your name. He chose you for a particular purpose and assignment in this earth that no one else can do but you. Man, that's powerful right there. But my wife and I, we've we've been together now for 33 years total. 33 years total. We're 48 years old. We're coming up on our 49th birthday uh, this year in uh, November. But out of the 48 years that we have been living, we have been involved with each other for 33 of those years. So that means we met each other when we were 15, 15 years old. Grab your mic, baby. You're going to have to, you're going to talk too. 15 uh, 15 years old, and this is the, the way that it happened. Um, we were, I was playing sports coming up, and I was really close to some of her family. We played baseball from, from T-ball all the way up, and uh, one day we were at the game, and she came to see her cousins to play, and, and, I, and I saw her. No, that is not where I saw you at. I know where I saw you at. <laughs> I was in Northwest Apartment, and I was visiting in Northwest Apartments, and I saw her walking, and I was like, man, who is that right there, you know, and at 15 years old, right, you know, and uh, at 15 years old, and I saw her, and she, she, you know, when people say you have the boxes that you check and everything, she met every box. She checked every box that, you know, that I had. And all that was is you had to be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know nothing else about anything else. She pretty and had long hair. You know, we weren't thinking about, I wasn't thinking about anything else or nothing else. She was pretty, and I know I wanted to talk to her. So I found out who she was, and we had, you know, started having conversation uh, from there at age 15. I started going back over. I think she actually had a boyfriend when I first, first met her, and I think I had a girlfriend, too, when I met her as well. But somehow those relationships dissolved, and we found ourselves that summer at the game. That's how we got to the game. And I saw her at the game, and I was talking to her cousin, and I was like, "Bro, you gotta hook me up with your cousin." So that was in nineteen. That was in nineteen eighty-eight. That was in nineteen eighty-eight because it was actually nineteen eighty-nine when we actually went on our first per se date, right? Yeah. So, from your perspective, from your perspective, what happened the first time that we that we met? Well, I'm I'm going to say this. Um, at first, he he wasn't, I don't know, my type or whatever you would say. I don't know. Like who have a type at like, 15? I didn't know, but I, I, I didn't like him at first. At first, I didn't like him. But you know what? Um, God has a plan. Whether you're outside of the will or in the will of the Father, he still has a plan. And even as unbelievers at that time, God still had a plan. Yeah. And, and God will work through whomever and whatever he, will, he uh, wants to work through so that his will can be done. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, well, it was um, that year was time for the ROTC ball. And, um, and something told me to ask him to go to the ball with me. Now, remind you, I didn't, I didn't like him at first, you know. At first, I, didn't, I really didn't. And, um, but something told me to ask him to go to the ball with me. At that time, I didn't have a personal relationship with God, but something told me to ask him. And so I asked him to go to the ROTC ball, and from there, we just uh, kicked it off. And um, the Lord have literally blessed our lives. 
literally blessed our lives. So we are so grateful, um, you know, for what God has has done and is Amen. doing and will to do, you know, in our lives. So we yeah. thank God we're here 27, today. 27 years of 27 years of marriage coming this year, to yes. be 27 years that uh, that we'll be married this year. January. We were January. Yeah. yeah. But uh, both of us, this is this is crazy, right? Both of us this year uh, coming into our anniversary, we were both celebrating our 27th year. And it was like not until like a day later, and we started talking to each other, and it was like we oh, we haven't been married twenty seven years. <laughs> I think we, you know, we put the stuff out there on Facebook and everything, like it was uh, twenty seven years, yeah. and it was actually twenty six years this year, but it uh, it'll be twenty seven years in January twentieth of twenty three. Will be twenty. Seven years, years, man. And I'm telling you, listen, I'm telling you, those years have not been easy. Those years have not been easy. But I promise you, as I look back and as I think about what God is doing, it is worth it. It can't compare what we've what we've gone through and what we've faced over the years. It cannot compare to where God has taken us. And I believe the same for your marriage as well, regardless of how long you have been married. God can take your marriage and make it out of something beautiful in the earth for his glory. And that is what we want to do today. And I promise you, we do not have enough time. I never have enough time. I tell our people when I minister, I do not have there is not enough time. I will never, ever finish a message on Sunday. It will always be continuation. Everything is a series because I cannot finish in one setting. And we know that we will not be able to finish in one setting today. But we hope that we will be able to give you some nuggets that's, that's really that you can take home, go back, study, and apply it. Right. Because this is the truth about anything that is going to be successful. When we get revelation, knowledge and insight, we have to now take that revelation, knowledge and insight. If it is the truth and now receive that truth within us and then meditate on it and then pray and ask God to help us apply that to our lives. Because if we never, if we come into events like this, if we come into settings like this and receive information and we don't do anything with it. Yeah, that was pretty good today, you know, that we came out and we never do anything with it. Then what we have taken in, it will not be beneficial for us in the end. It will not be beneficial for our relationship. There are are people in here. So let's let's by show of hands who's been married 50 years or more. Wow. 50 years or more. Come on. We need to give a round of applause. (laughs) Round of applause for those that have been married. So could you could you could you stand up and just tell us who you are and how long you have been married? March the 4th. Come on, let's give, a, let's give a round of applause. Amen. 50 years. I saw two hands over here. Uh, well, come December the 27th and live 45. 53 years. 53 years. Thank God. 53 years. Faucets. God, 50, 51, and 53 years. That is a 
long time. And I'm, I'm a, let me say this. When, when, we first, when we first got married, we were, we were 21 years old. And after about a month or two of marriage, I started thinking about the vows, apostle, that I had given. And one word just kept sticking in my head. And that word was forever. <laughs> I'm going to come a little closer. You mean to say I said I do forever? I ain't never said I do to anything for, forever. And, 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 and it was, I mean, really, it was really, it, it came upon me like a wave that now I have stood before God because I honor God, right? 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 Right. I know you invited all your friends to your, your wedding. I, I know you are inviting all of your friends and all of your family to your wedding and all the people that mean something to you. But can I say to you this, that all of the people that are in there, that's good. But there's one that you are standing before God that makes all of the difference. One. See, I didn't just give my vows to the people, my wife, and in the ears of the people. But greater than giving my vows to my wife, I made a vow to her in the, in, in, in the presence of God. So, so even, yeah, see, I don't want to move too fast. So, so even when, 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 when things are happening here, I got to honor her here because I got to honor God because I gave my vows to God before I gave my vows to her before God. So as I begin to think about forever, the Holy Spirit had to break things down for me because, you know, I'm not as smart as you. So the Holy Spirit had to break things down for me. And the Holy Spirit said to me, son, that he said, you can do this. He said, you got to break it down. He said, you got to put it, you got to break it down to where you can, you can handle it. And he said, the only thing you have to do is stay married one minute at a time. And he said, before long, he said, now all you have to do, tell yourself, I can stay married five minutes, 10 minutes, then one day, two days, five days till you get up to a month. And now you're at a year. God, I thank you that we're going to have a successful year in marriage. God, I thank you for the next five years that's going to be blessed. God, I thank you that you're going to do a work for the next 10 years. Till I can get to the place that I say to God, I thank you for forever. But you got to be able to see it first. You got to be able to see it. Because everything that can happen in this natural realm can cause us to break covenant that we have made in the spirit realm. But this is what has happened now because we're so smart and we're so, we're so educated and we're intelligent. And let me tell you what happens. We start taking our own advice. We start believing our own hype and we think that we can do it on our own. My Jesus. I know, I know, I, I'm, I'm talking about me if I'm not on your road right now or in your house. I, I just want, I just want to talk about my house and maybe if I reveal some things that have happened in my house, then maybe it'll help you in your house. If, am I- what, what we like in relationship and who we are is a product of what we've seen, what we've read, what we've experienced. All of us have a blueprint. Look at it this way. My wife and I, in, 2000, in 2015, we, we bought the home that we're in now. We had it built uh, from the ground up, had it built, kind of did what we wanted to do in it. They built it, and we moved into it. So, when we moved into the home, we loved the home, right? But the house that we live in is a product of somebody else's vision. (laughs) 
See, see, Apostle, when, when, when I moved in the house, there were certain things when my wife, when she walked in, when they built the model, it was certain parts about the model and certain aspects of the home that she liked and she gravitated to it. And when, at the end of seeing the house, my wife said, I got to have this house right here. So they didn't have it, so they had to go build it. But what we built then what is what we like by what we saw and experienced but the plans were not our own so today we're living in a home that is a product of somebody else's vision who who in the room now you're married right now and you're either happy or not happy in your marriage in your relationship but i need to tell you today that it is a product of somebody else's vision of what relationship is or what is it is not see we got to understand that 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 the things that i like y'all y'all grown folks in here the things that i like in relationship with my wife it came from experiencing it with other women See, see, can, can, can I tell the truth, Apostle? See, because how, how do I know what I like? Because see, we messed the order up because God said that we ought to keep ourselves when we get married. If you did that, thank God for you. I praise God for you. I praise God for you. And I pray that, that, that you married a man that did the same. But if you kept yourself and he didn't, guess what? There's certain things about you that he's going to train you to do that he got from somebody else. Okay. All right. Let me go on this side. Because now by experience and what we have tampered with and touched and what we have taken in our own control and did what we wanted to do with it. Now we have built up experiences and now we have built up desires on the inside of us that now we are putting expectations on our husbands and wives that was built in sin. How in the world can this woman of God now feel the expectations that I have that I got when I was in sin? Oh, wait, wait, she just can't, she just can't do it for me in the bed. Well, you shouldn't have been in the bed before you got in the bed with her. Uh, you, you, you shouldn't have been in the bed because, because you got in the bed. Excuse me, mama, you ain't seen me like this before. <laughs> But, 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 but the truth of the matter is we have so many expectations that are visions, but they are plans of somebody else and we haven't seeked, we did, have not sought the Lord. And we're in marriages and we're struggling. We've been married, not y'all. We've been married 50 years and we've been married 60 years and we've been maintaining, but we've been married, but we really haven't had successful marriage. There's a difference between being married and having a successful kingdom marriage. That's why I say we got to explore the word and see what the Bible has to say about marriage because marriage is not for us to have sex legally. Good God almighty. It is, it is not, oh, I got to get married because if I don't get married, I know I ain't going to be able to keep myself. Well, marriage is not just to have sex because sex ain't going to be able to keep you. Sex ain't going to be able to fulfill you because God got purpose for your marriage. You trying all this stuff, got your wife swinging from chandelier, wearing all this crazy stuff and putting on masks in the bed, putting on wigs to look like somebody else so you can fulfill some desires that you got in the world. You want to treat your wife like you treat the woman you met on the block and you can't treat God's girls like that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I got to help some folk today. I got to help some folks today because we got to change the model that we've been living by. You've been talking about my daddy. My daddy was a good man. No, your daddy wasn't no good man. You just need to talk to your mama real good. She just trying to spare your feelings and not tell you the truth. Your daddy wasn't as good as you think he was or is. Your mama wasn't as good as you think she are and, and, and was. She ain't. 
Sí, sí, ahí. No. 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 When I started seeking out kingdom marriage, I love my mama and my dad. And when I started seeking out the identity of kingdom marriage, I had to go to the king. I couldn't, I couldn't go to his representative because they may have heard him wrong. Y'all better hear me. Because it was something in them that they didn't deal with. It was a problem in them that they didn't deal with. So when the king spoke, they didn't really take what he said. And they didn't apply it. So we're looking at people. Oh, people, they used to tell us all the time. They said, well, we, we just love y'all's marriage. I say, well, y'all need to just come home with us. <laughs> and not that we had a bad relationship. We didn't have a bad relationship. But there was so much in it that needed to be healed. Because I know there's a debate. There's a debate in, 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 in the church about generational curses and, and all of this. Whether they can be passed or not. Generational curses. This is what I say. And this is what I believe wholeheartedly. That it is present. There are generational influences that can influence every generation. I don't believe that I have to suffer with what people suffered before me. No, no, ma'am. I don't have to suffer with it if my parents or their parents suffer with it. Now, the influence of it, because the enemy is not, the enemy is wise, right? So he knows the bloodline. So what he's going to do is try to influence me the same way he influenced my parents, the same way he influenced her parents, the same way they influenced their parents. But somebody got to be the one to say, no, I'm going to do it the kingdom way. I'm going to do it the kingdom way. And we've put so many expectations on these husbands and these wives that are according to the model that you created. You created it. So, Apostle, how much time I got? 12 o'clock. Did you say 12? You, you, you told me 12, didn't you? <laughs> This is, write this scripture down. Write this scripture down. I got to show you this and then we're going to go. It's in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. See, this is what we don't want to have happen. Matthew chapter 13. Verse Number 15. This is why marriages will have not changed. Because I believe all marriages can change. Wherever you are today. From the place from I think it was 53 years and below. From 53 years and below. Wherever you are. We can grow to another level. And where relationship, where marriage is not just about our fellowship. Because it is greater than fellowship. If you're making notes, you got to make the remind yourself of this. Write this down. That marriage is about assignment and purpose. It is about assignment and purpose. God never made anything in this earth without an assignment on it. Everything that God made, he attached assignment to it and purpose. So if God ordained marriage, why did he ordain it? If it was just to have kids, we, we, we got that. We, we done done that. We done done that real well. But it's, 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 it's greater than that. But this is Matthew chapter 13, verse number 15, is what can keep us from recovering, growing and increasing and becoming the man and woman that God has called and designed us to be. Verse number 15, it, 15, it says, for the heart of this people have grown what? 
the verse 15. I'm in I'm in New King James. Matthew 13, chapter 13, verse number 15. For the heart of this people have what? Grown dull or uh, you say wax cold? That's in the wax. That's in the King James. So for the heart of this people have grown dull or wax cold. Their ears are what? Hard of hearing. See, the ears become hard of hearing when we think we already know. When we when we think we have all of the answers. Well, I, I, I've been married a long time now. I got this. I, you know, I really know how to do this. Yes, you do according to your own model that you have created. But the model have you that you created is your wife or your husband. Are they satisfied with that model? Are, are they truly happy with the way the relationship is going or are they just maintaining for the for the to save the face? You know, we did this and spent all this money before people. We're going to make this thing work. Uh, am I really? Ha and see, this is the thing now, because what's going to happen after you hear a word like this is going to challenge you when you go home. Because some some woman, the man may not may not. He may not do it. But the woman is going is going to ask, are, are you really happy with me? Are you really happy with the man? We ain't going to do it because see, so, sometimes we don't really want to know the answer. <laughs> we don't want to know the answer, though. We gonna, we'll stay away from that right there. Baby, you happy with me? No, you don't want to know. The, you don't want to know. You don't want to know the answer to that. So what it's going to do is challenge you in the area of your relationship because that's what truth does. Truth will always challenge us in an area that we need to come up in and the first thing that is going to happen is that you're going to get mad at each other I, i'm telling you i do i've been to some some relationship events and hear testimonies from people after they leave that it and played all the little games together and the husband didn't know nothing uh none of the questions and 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 what my favorite color i he ain't know nothing i i don't know you wear every color all of them your favorite color to me i don't know I don't know. My favorite food, what I like to eat, I, it changed by the week. You know, I don't know. And you leave there and you upset because we don't know each other personally. And because we don't know each other personally, we get upset with each other and now we can't grow. But listen, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Too often we spend too much time trying to know each other personally. And we become strangers spiritually. Some of us, we know everything about our wives, our husband. We know what they like. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. But when our focus is to know them only personally, then we become strangers spiritually. How many of us are truly praying together how 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 many of us truly are declaring the word together how how many of us really know the word together how how let, let me tell you when when my wife when our relationship began to truly change is when we begin to understand that god called us together And we started seeking after God. We started seeking him together. And our ears could not be dull to the truth that we were reading in the Bible. If God is a God that can raise somebody from the dead, God can heal marriage. With the same anointing that we preach and prophesy in church. It's the same anointing and power that we can love our husband and our wives with. 
And I'm going to tell you the reason why there's so much animosity in church because we can see our husband and our wives up ministering and doing the work of God and serving in the church and serving other people. And when they come home, they are not the same person at home as they are in church. You anointed in church, smiling at everybody in church, and you happy and you prophesying. And why you ain't prophesying in this marriage? Why, why you ain't smiling at me the way you were smiling at Deacon Jones when you was greeting him? Come on, somebody. You hug everybody on Sundays, and you ain't got one hug during the week from your wife or your husband. And you and we wonder why the divorce rate is so much higher in the church than the world. Looking at all these anointed folks preaching and serving. And then you get home and fussing and fighting. Look at somebody says the same anointing. It's the same anointing. The same anointing. It'll work in your marriage. Look at look at somebody. Let tell them it'll work in marriage too. It'll work in marriage too. It'll, it, it, it'll work in marriage. I'm going to tell you, write this scripture down. Go study it later. But this scripture changed my life when the Holy Spirit showed me. Revelation chapter 5, verse number 10. It changed my life. Revelation chapter 5, verse number 10. And he has made unto himself. He has made unto himself kings and priests in the earth. Let me read it. I want to read it because I I, I'm not quoting it exactly right. So let me read it to you. This is one scripture. It's, in, it's also in Revelation chapter 1, verse number 6. He has made unto himself. One translation says a kingdom. Revelation chapter 5, verse number 10. Revelation 5, verse number 10. It says, and have made, and he has made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. And God has made us kings and priests. What do kings, kings establish order and government. Priests are in relationship and communion with God. To establish his will and his ways in the earth. So God says that he has made us, you and I, not just me, right? Not not just me, because I know there's this theory that, i touch that later, but it, it is not just me, stand up baby, but God, the scripture says that God has made unto himself one translation say a kingdom of kings and priests unto himself that we will rule on the earth. How are we to rule? Together. How are we how how, how are we to rule? No. No. Together. We rule together. I understand the scripture. The man, you know, we talk about the being the head of the household and everything. I understand that. But when it comes to, listen, this is what we have to, this is what, thank you, baby. This is what we have to think about this. And I'm going to get back to the text. But think about this. When we talk about the man being the head of of the household. That's a lot of pressure. And a lot of responsibility. But God has given us the ability to be able to do it. Right? So. Think about this. You have a woman that is truly in love with God. Seeking God with her whole heart. Loving God. Hearing God. Know the voice of God. And you have a man. Uh, the man is always a bad guy. We have a man that's loving God. Seeking God, honoring God with all of his heart, and have a wife that is not. So, when it comes to the spirit, the, the, when it comes to 
the natural realm, then yes, okay, you can be the head of the household. We're going back to the man. That's really not in the will of God the way that he should be. Don't know the word, none of that. When it comes to the natural realm, then yes, it's okay. We're talking about raising our children. We're talking about building a house, talking about retirement, all of this kind of stuff. When it deals with natural things, then yes, it's okay for you to be the head. But when it comes to the spiritual authority in the house, that's that's neither male or female driven. But but that is the one who is the most submitted to God. Because why am I going to entrust my spiritual, come on somebody, why am I going to entrust a spiritual authority to somebody that don't know God? I, I want to, I want to, I, I, I see, I hear you women. I, I want to submit to you, but you don't know God. I can't submit to you. I can submit to you as it relates to this house and what we're going to do. But when it comes to the direction of God, if you don't know God, if you don't know his voice, then I have to become the spiritual authority in the house so our family won't stay stuck, so our children won't stay sick, so our finances won't stay broke. Somebody better pray with me this morning. We so caught up on the men being the head of the house. I'm the head of the house. You, I ain't seen you pray in five days all week long. You ain't prayed. I ain't seen you read your word. No, you can't be the spiritual authority in this house if you don't know the word. I don't care how grown you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how your mama and daddy did it. No, God has a destination for this family. And if you don't want to lead the way, I got to take the hands and go. Because I'm not going to allow the enemy to keep defeating my family over and over and over again. Every time, every time the enemy show up, you feel, I got to go take me a drink. I can't take this right here. No, I need somebody that can pray. We're talking about head of households. We need to know who the spiritual authority is. That's what I want to know. Who is the spiritual authority in your household? Who is the one that can get a prayer through in the household? Who is the one that can lay hands on the sick and they recover? Who is the one that can speak to the enemy and he leaves? But it should be. It should be both of us together. It shouldn't be just one. God has made for himself us to be kings and priests in the earth. But what happens, verse number 15, for the hearts of the people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and they, and listen to this, and their eyes, they have closed. How many people in the room have closed your ears and your eyes to what God is wanting to do in your relationship? How, how many of us have gotten to a place of I'm satisfied? Can I say to you that being satisfied is not a good place? God challenged me on the other day. It was about it was about three weeks ago and I was thinking about things and and, you know, I didn't have any worries. Right. I didn't have, I, you know, well, how I'm going to pay this or how I'm going to do that. I didn't have anything that go, that that was going on that I was worried about. And then God said to me, he said, a life without faith is not life at all. I ain't saying that God saying to me to get all my money away. And be broke and big for, you know, and g give it all away and believe me for money. But no, he says, I'm challenging you in the area of your life where you're going to have to have faith to be able to carry out purpose and destiny. If, if you're not having to extend your faith, then guess what? You are not in the will of God as it relates to your purpose. Because purpose fulfilled in God will always take faith. Hebrews 11 and 6. What does it say? 
but it is impossible to please God, what? Without faith. I can't please him without faith. So if, 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 if I'm not, if I, in our relationship, if there's nothing in our relationship that we're believing for, to get better, to be stronger, to help other people, if we're not utilizing our faith, then guess what? We're just, we're just marking time. For the hearts of the people have grown dull, their, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Least they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. That is what God wants to do. He wants to heal us. Now, turn to your Bibles in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it home in this last hour. <laughs> it's 11.08. I'm watching the time. I heard 10 to 12. I'm going to stay. I'm, I'm going to stay with that, Pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay with it. Now, with the example that I said earlier, the house that my wife and I live in, we love the house. We love most everything about the house. But the house we built that we're living in and enjoying is the vision of another architect. It was not ours was not our plans there was an architect that drew the plans up for that very house and because there was something that we like about the house we built the house but there is nothing original about it the same way they built the house for us they built the same plan for somebody else so how many of us in the room are living in the vision and the plans of somebody else's relationship? What they have determined what relationship is. Not everything is bad that has happened in our relationships. I mean, we again, we, we have three couples that's over 50 years. Is there good in that? Yes. Of course, there is good. They met some challenges, just as we have in the 26 years, almost 27 years that we have been married. But the challenges that we met, most of the challenges we met is because either she or I were operating in the vision or the desires of somebody else or something that we acquired along the way. And when we came together, we bumped heads. I know you want to think your relationship is original. <laughs> I, I ain't trying to cause no trouble. I really am not. I, I, I had to deal with this myself. But there is nothing original. Unless you got her or him out of the womb. And y'all grew up together. Then there's nothing original. Even if. Hear this. Even if. He or she. Stay pure. All of their life. And y'all got married together. There is still. Nothing new. Or original. Or no new ideas. As it relates to relationship. It came from somebody else. So if I'm going to get insight. If I'm going to have to live by insight. From somebody else. Then I'm going to get my insight from God. I can't go to my mama. I love my mama. 
I can't go to her mama. She in heaven. Her mama in heaven. So I, I, I can't go to them. I got to go to the originator. So if I want to know how to have successful relationship and work the principles of successful relationship, I have to go back to the beginning. I got to go back to the beginning. I can't go back and talk to David. I can't go back and talk to Paul. He never did marry. I can't, get, I can't go back and talk to people. I can't talk to none of them. I can't go back and talk to the, the apostles because I'm sure when they was running after Jesus for three years, their wife didn't like it. They, they had something to say. You mean you getting ready to shut your business down and do what? You, you, you getting ready to entrust your business. I don't believe they shut it down. But I, you getting ready to entrust your business to who and do what? I'm sure. I tell my wife, you know what? We're getting ready to shut chosen hands down and we're going to put it in the hands of Miracle and Shaquille and let them run it. You, you, you what? And we get ready to run after the Lord. No. <laughs> no, no. No. So we have to go back to the beginning. What existed in the beginning? I don't have time to read all of the chapters, but go back and read it at your leisure. Genesis chapter 1 through verse number through chapter number 4. Go back and read it at your leisure, but I got to show you what happened, what existed, the principles that existed before the fall and what happened after the fall. Because before the fall is God's original intent. It's the original intent or purpose of God when we look at the beginning. So before the fall, listen, because this is what now we need to start establishing our relationships on. This is the foundation because if you build a house, anybody know anything about building? It doesn't matter how beautiful the, 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 you construct the building. If the foundation is no good, everything is coming down. So we got to build and the foundation. And some of us in the room, you may have to do like me. You may have to rebuild the foundation that you have built upon because you thought just because you love God that that was enough to have a successful relationship no it ain't when you love God enough to die to yourself then you on the road to having a better relationship but the Bible says Jesus told him he told his disciples if he says that if you're gonna come after me you got the first you got to you got to deny yourself. You got to take up your cross and you got to follow after me. So God is saying to the men in the house, God is saying to the women, if you want to have a successful relationship. You got to follow after me. You got to deny, take up your cross, deny yourself and follow after me. So, but, Apostle, what happened? What happened? I, I, I realized one day that if I surrendered myself totally to him that he would then teach me how to love her see this is what I, I said this one Sunday in my church and people they thought I was a little crazy but you got to understand that we have a dual relationship we got a dual relationship me and my wife and I in the natural realm she is my wife. I married her. I got papers at home to say it. But in the spirit realm, she is my sister. She, she is my sister in the spirit realm. Why? Because we got the same daddy. So I can't treat my sister any kind of way. You see, 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 see people that got brothers and sisters, you understand. See, you can't, you can't treat your siblings any kind of way without your daddy saying something. Especially if you, especially if you got a little sister. 
or something. If you if you have siblings and you're older than them and you always bullying them, making them do what they want, you know, you they going to the daddy. They going to the parents and they going they going to check you on it. So what start helping me is not that she is my wife. That's good. But I got to treat her like her daddy treat her. Until I learn to treat her like her daddy treat her, I still got a long way to go. I, I, I'm growing. I, I, I'm not saying I'm there yet, but, but I'm understanding. I have the understanding now to know that she is the daughter of a king. And a king just don't give his daughter over to anybody to treat him any kind of way. Because what I do to the daughter, my, my, to his daughter, I'm doing to him. So when I talk to her ugly, guess who I'm talking? I'm talking ugly to her daddy. You start thinking about it next time you get ready to go off on him. Because he didn't pick up his clothes. My wife told me the other day, she said, listen, can you you just pick up the clothes after you finish taking a shower? Can you pick the clothes up off the floor? I said, yeah, I'm going to get them sooner or later. (laughs) I mean, sooner or later. I just wasn't ready to get them at that point. We ain't fall out about it or nothing. I let her grab the clothes and go put them in there. (laughs) Go ahead. See, I have to watch. I had to, I, I have to consider my response because I know my daddy and her daddy is listening. That's why I can't talk to my children any kind of way. Cause I know they daddy listening. That, 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 that's why, that's why when we, when we, when we talk, when we commune together, and, and even if I don't understand what she's saying, I'm listening to, to get, to gain understanding because I know that it's not just between us. This covenant is between us and God. So I gotta make sure that when I'm treating her, it, how I'm treating her, that I know that he's watching right there that principle right there I promise you you just gain 20% on you you just increase your relationship 20% if you do it the arguments and all that fussing and, and, and cussing some cause some of y'all still cuss when you get mad I ain't saying you're not saved I'm just saying that that you still cuss when you get when you get mad when you and your wife uh, when y'all having discussions, can I say, Apostle say, help him, Jesus. Can I say that you don't have to? You don't have to do it. Because this is what, this is, stand up, baby. If we're having a discussion, stand this way. If we're having a discussion and this is me, I'm over there talking to her and I'm upset about something. I need to see her daddy standing behind her just like this. I need to see a daddy sitting behind her. I need to see him sitting, standing right behind her, looking at me, watching every word that comes out of my mouth. Thank the Lord. By the words, we're going to be justified. By our words, we're going to be condemned. Glory. Amen. Amen. Right? So I want, my word. I want to be justified by my words. I don't want to be condemned by my words. So I have to watch what I say to her for his sake, for for my sake. I have to watch it 20%. I promise you 20%, your relationship will get 20% better if you just remember that when you're discussing issues. You're always going to have to discuss issues in the house. Always. Do you have to argue, fuss, and fight? about it all loud screaming and yelling nope how do i know we haven't done it in years you don't have to raise your voice to be heard your ears work if your ears work you ain't got to scream you ain't got to yell at me and you don't have to be condescending when you're talking to me that was my problem god had to deal with me about that 
condescending talking to people like they should already know. I, I, uh, I can't believe I can't believe you know you don't think like I think. Really, really, that's what we're saying. I, I don't believe that you can't you you don't think like I think. Till my wife told me one day, one day she we we don't have the same mind. We don't think alike in everything. You may have a point there. I don't see everything the way you see it, which is good. Which we have to, Amos chapter three, verse number three. Write it down. Can two walk together? The Bible, I love, I love the way the Holy Spirit, God has, ha, has orchestrated his word. And in Amos chapter 3, verse number 3, it says, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Question mark. In every translation, there's a question mark there. Because he's asking a question and it's not a rhetorical question. It's a question that we must answer. Can to walk together unless they are agreed. Now, this is agreement. Agreement does not mean that my wife and I must have the same thoughts in every situation. That is not agreement. That's a copycat. That's a clone. We don't want to be clones. We may not have the same thoughts in every thing, in every situation or how to handle every situation. We may not have the same thought, but the commonality that we must come in agreement on is the word of God. What does the word say? See, how many times have we had situations in our houses, uh, had disagreements in our houses, and we stop all of the all of the yelling and screaming and just ask each other, what does the word say about this particular situation? That's another 5% right there. You, you, right? Tw- I've just given you 25% in the last 10 minutes of how to increase your relationship, 25, 25%. Number one, know that your wife or your husband know that they are the child of a king. Number two, you got to, un- what, what did I just say? What did I just say? What's the last point I just made? Agreement, yes. <laughs> the agreement. The agreement. We got to come into agreement. Oh, here it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When in the, in the midst of your arguments or discussions, stop and ask each other, what does the word have to say about it? 25% right there. So in Rome, in uh, Genesis chapter one, I'm not going to read it, but I want to talk about relationship from the beginning. Because when we look at the beginning, it is God's original intent. It is God's plan. And it it is his idea. Right? So from the beginning, I know most of us in the room, we've read the Bible. We understand creation. We know in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 that God made us in his image according to his likeness. And he's given us. Uh, he's told us be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion, all of that, right? For all of us. See, he did not, that, that is just not uh, the command that God has given to the male. But that is the command, the fivefold command that God gave to mankind. Which includes the female. So when God says. To be fruitful. To multiply. To subdue. To have dominion. Over all of the earth. When God said that. He was not just talking to. The male. But he was talking to the mankind. So that's why I say. When me and my wife. As my wife and I walk together. As we walk, we have to walk together. Not she walking behind, walking behind me, 
No, I, you know, you, they, I think it's a saying behind every good man is a good woman. I don't want no good woman behind me because, see, I need you beside me because now when you're beside me, my per- peripheral vision just got better. See, if you're behind me, then I'm blocking your vision. But if you're standing beside me, y'all better hear me. When you're standing beside me, my peripheral just got, it just got greater. And, and, and if I'm focused on something this way, you can be watching over this way. Our vision just increased. I'm not trying, no, I'm not trying to put myself in front of you and hinder the vision of this relationship. Let us, let us walk together. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? So, yes, ma'am, please do. Minutes ago, but um, I I think this is important um, to everyone um, here today. Um, He was talking about, you know, how we uh, treat one another, um, how we talk to one another um, in um, our marriage or even just, you know, talk to people in general, because I believe that. How I treat you is a direct, it should be a direct relationship with your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. If you love God and and you enter into the presence of God with such a holy reverence and standing in awe before him and you honor God, then guess what? Whenever you talk to your husband or whenever you talk to your children, whenever you talk to your neighbors or your friends, you will treat them, you know, out of that relationship with God. You're not going to be ugly. You're not going to be mean. You're not going to be nasty. I'm not saying that, you know, there's not, you know, times where we have to get firm. I use the word firm. I use the word firm. And um, a, a nursing student told me uh, one day, um, not a nursing student, but another nurse. In nursing, we have to learn how to be um nasty nice but I use firm the word firm because sometimes we have to get you know firm with people but everything that you do let it be done out of love let it be done out of love let it be done as unto the Lord and so um you know, out of my relationship with Christ, you know, that's how I'm able to uh, uh, love my husband. I'm able to, you know, talk to him nice. I'm able to talk to him kind, even though, you know, sometimes, you know, we have conflict, but out of it all, because of my relationship with Christ and because of the word of the of word of the Lord, I don't have to bring him down. I don't have to talk down to him. I, I don't have to talk nasty to him, even when whenever situations get heated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can rem- I can still have that posture as in I you know I I love you I, I want to encourage you I want to build you up I got your back even Amen. though everything may not be going like we uh, want it to go but glory to God we are working towards you know uh, getting better the situation it will get better because a lot of times it matters um, how you respond and how you talk to each other whether or not you're going to overcome that situation or or whether or not you're going to allow that situation to overcome you. Sure. Glory to God. And so I learned that a long time ago, um, you know, my response to people. And I know um, uh, uh, in past times, some people have called me naive. Well, it's okay. You call me naive. Call me whatever you want to call me. But my response is to treat you like God. Hallelujah. My response is to treat you and to, and, and to say unto you according to what the word says. Glory to God so as pastor was talking about that this came to me in first Peter 3 starting at the seventh verse it says, husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding glory to God so they are to dwell with us vice versa with understanding and I learned this a long time ago that let, let me tell you love glory to God love will not keep you together Love will not keep you together. Yes, we want to love our, you know, uh, spouses. We want to love each other because the Bible tells us to love. God is love. And so we, you know, have to love one another. But I'm telling you, understanding will help you stay together. Hallelujah. Because we even see today where there is a whole lot of people that loved each other. But guess what? They're not together. 
Amen. Whole lot of people. And they were in Christ Jesus who love one another, but they ain't together today. But I believe that understanding will help you to stay together. Glory to God. Understanding will help you to stay together. Because God told me many, many years ago, he said, I can save your marriage. I said, good God Almighty, you are bad God. If you can save my marriage, then save it, Jesus. But guess what I had to do? I had to obey the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I had to change me, my way of thinking and how I thought things should be or how things should go or how Malcolm should be. Guess what? You can't change nobody. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Only Amen. the power of God can change a man. So I learned long, a long time ago, guess what? You got to put your husbands in the, your husband in the hand of the Lord. You got to put your children in the hands of the Lord or whatever it is. You have to give that thing over unto God and you have to seek God glory to God concerning the matter and put prayer on it and put the word on it and put daily declarations on it in the name of Jesus and I'm telling you today I am living proof that the word works hallelujah Amen. it works every time whenever Amen. you mix the word of God with faith. faith glory to God hallelujah if you think I could change him or he could change me no it is God the one that changes the one hallelujah that search the deep things of men who have the power to turn a person, glory to God, hallelujah, and make them brand new in him, glory to God. So dwell with them in understanding, glory to God. As a matter of fact, and sometimes, you know, pastor, um, I, you know, the understanding, sometimes like down through the years, I think both of us is getting it now that we don't think alike because that was a big issue for us. Because mm -hmm. certain things, you know, um, I would say or he would say, make a comment and he would think I ought to know. But sometimes I just didn't know. Right. Glory to God. And like I used to tell him, I say, we don't think alike. We don't think alike. God didn't call and created us just to think alike. Glory to God. Amen. And sometimes that's what, you know bring out the best in a relationship because you're different in so many ways your creativity his creativity what you know he may bring to the table what I you know I may bring to the table glory to God we bring those ideas and you know those things together and it be a great combustion in the Holy Spirit glory to Amen. God and then it says here, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, not meaning that the woman is uh, uh, weak spiritually, but it's talking about the women as physical, physical in the natural physical glory to God, because we want you women to be strong. We Amen. want you men to be strong. We want you to level up. We want you to boss up in this hour like never before. We want you to warrior. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, because because I'm telling you because times are going to come and we know that the enemy, he goes to and fro seeking whomever he may devour. But I decree and declare over you today that you will not be devoured by the enemy whatsoever. You will not be devoured by the enemy, but you will stand up in your strength and power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I am telling you right now, if I had not learned prayer early on, and I think Apostle Bernice Davis, Apostle Marlene Mackey, uh, sister, um, Julia Fawcett, Deacon Clifford Fawcett, those at Mount Olive, that's where I learned prayer. Amen. Listen, I used to go to church, you know, young, you know, in the things of God. I didn't know nothing about prayer, but I, they knew how to pray, and they would encourage us to come to prayer on Wednesday night, whatever we were having. And guess what? I came to prayer. I didn't know how to pray at the first, but I learned prayer, glory to God, just by being in the midst. And then I would take it, you know, at home, what I I learned from church and then I began to pray and things at home but I'm telling you and because of my foundation in the things of God and prayer God developed my prayer life and I'm telling you and down through the years listen if it had not been for my prayer life with God I don't know where I would be I don't know where my family would be in the name of Jesus I'm telling you you got to have a prayer life and not only that but you got to be strong in 
and the word of the Lord. In these last days, I'm telling you, you got to know the word of God. Hallelujah. You got to know prayer. You know, you got to know how to invoke the presence of God like never before. You got to know how to speak my God to principalities and powers in the name of Jesus and command them to loose, be loose off your family in the name of Jesus. And so it was prayer, the power of prayer. I'm telling you, it literally saved our life. Prayer coupled with the word of the Lord. And when you pray, you got to be strategic in this hour. When you pray, you can't be, you cannot just be saying any kind of thing because guess what? The enemy know the word of the Lord too. And he know those that are packing with power, those that are packing with prayer. He know those that are not scared of him, but he know those who have the spirit of God on the inside of him. Glory to God. And who will stand up in his face and tell him, no devil, you a liar. You will not cross this line. You will not have my family. You will not have my children. He shall live and he shall not die. And I decree and declare that he shall, glory to God, hallelujah, live out what God have called him to live out and to do in this earth realm. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, something. Right, that's, that's why I said, we, I, I don't want her behind me. I need her fighting beside me. Yes, Glory to God. Right, because I can't keep that kind of power in the back. I need it beside me. And we need it beside us, walking Hallelujah. together. And understanding. Understanding. Compre- understanding is comprehension. Comprehending. Yes. I, I gotta. I, I don't just want to know you. Come on. I gotta comprehend yes. who you are. How can I help better serve your destiny? Glory. That's why God put us together. How can I help better serve your purpose? In the same way, I, I know it's because of God. That I am here today. But I've had people praying for me for a long time. And I know that the prayers. The Bible declares this. That the prayers of the righteous availeth. What? Much. So I, I can't even be. The man of God that I am today. If I didn't have somebody pushing me in prayer. But I have somebody pushing me. In prayer. When God looked at everything that he had made, the book of Genesis, it said God that he looked at everything that he had made and he said that everything that he made was good. Everything that he had made was good. And he went on to say that for everything that had been given to me, but for Adam, he had no one. He, Adam didn't have anyone. So God said that he was going to make Adam somebody comparable to him not less than him <laughs> but equal to him equal in power equal in authority equal in anointing equal in wisdom equal in understanding Real quick, so those of you that, I'm telling you, I got so much. God has been preparing us for this for so long. And thank you, Apostle, for this. Thank you for, thank you. Thank you for this. Because this is a part, this is a part of the ministry that God had placed in my wife and I. Building up couples in the kingdom. But in Luke I think it's Luke chapter 22. In Luke chapter 22. I'm going to show you where the problem lies. I'm going to show you why we're just now really launching out into kingdom relationships. And building the body of Christ in the area of relationship. 
in Luke chapter 22. Verse number 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. King James, I love King James. I got new king. But King James, new king says, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. King James says, and when you are converted, strengthen your brother. This is the same Peter that had walked with Jesus that had seen the miracles, signs, and the wonders. The same Peter that was endowed with the same power to go out and lay hands and, and, and cast out devils. That here Jesus said to Peter. He says that the enemy desires to sift you as wheat. The enemy desires to sift marriages as wheat. But Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. That your faith fail not in the sifting. Many people Many people, they don't make it through the sifting. They don't, they don't make it through the time of pressure. They don't make it through the time of contention. They don't make it through adultery. They don't make it through uh, uh, children being lost. They don't make it through a mother or a father being lost. They don't make it through the loss of a job and losing house and losing everything you have. Some people don't make it through the sifting. They don't make it through the hard times. They don't, they don't make it through being married to a mama's boy. They don't, they don't make it through being married to a woman that really has never left home and always want to be at the home with her family. They, they don't make it. Through the loss of, through, through, through abortion or, or miscarriage. They don't make it. They don't make it through the sifting. They don't, they don't make it through the arguments. They don't, they don't make it through the perception, the difference in perceptions, through the different models. Well, I was raised like this and you were raised like this and we saw it like this. They don't make it through the contention when you have two different mindsets and you're in the same house. They don't make it through the sifting. They don't make it through the, 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 the man or the woman not loving God as much as they love God. They don't make it when they're serious about the kingdom and you got one that's still in the streets out doing all kind of crazy. They don't make it. They can't make it when you in the house and he at the club. You praying and she out with the girls. They don't make it through the sifting. They don't make it. They don't, they don't make it when, they're, when their children uh, get in trouble and get locked up and have to go to prison for eight years. They don't make it. Because, because you look at each other and, and you blame each other for what has happened in the relationship and what is going on with your children and what could we have done and they don't make it through the sifting. They don't make it because you married a man that liked a lot of men, liked a lot of women. When you married him and you knew it and you married him anyway and they don't make it because the residue of who he was, the residue of who she was is still on them and they don't, they don't make it through the sifting. They don't make it through the siftings. They don't make it through the times that are hard. See, you don't understand the story. You don't understand what we've been through to get to this place. You don't understand what we have survived. You don't understand the sifting that we had to overcome to get here. Jesus said to Peter that the enemy desires to sift you. To 
sift Hallelujah. your marriages. But he said, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. Yeah. And when you are converted. See, that's why I couldn't do it before now. Because he said, you got to be converted. That, 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 that's why I couldn't help nobody else because I had to be converted. That's why I couldn't really speak into the life of men the way that it was in my heart because I had to be converted first because God said that it is impossible for us to be the solution and part of the problem at the same time. How, 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 how can you be a part of the problem and the solution at the same time? How can you give encouragement when you need to be encouraged? How can you help others through what they are going through when you are still in it? So he says, I can't allow you to go forth right now because you got to be strengthened before you go forth because if you go forth too early, then what you're going to impart is that which is in you. I can only impart and give and you leave from people and getting advice from people who have not come out of what you're trying to get out of and they impart their weaknesses into you they impart their troubles into you and you go home with more trouble than you came with because you entrusted your life to somebody who had entrusted their life to Christ. And Jesus said, son, it's in you. But you can't give it till you've been converted. Because the only thing that you can duplicate is what's on the inside of you. So he said, Peter, I know you're preaching. Peter, I know you're laying hands on the sick. Peter, I know you're prophesying. But he said, before you strengthen your brother, you need to be converted. You got to be converted. That's why... I can't, even get, I can't even get back there. That's why the Lord said to me, Apostle, it was three, it was about three, work, three weeks ago. And I said this in my, in my church because I got to get back to God's original intent. Play that music you was playing at the beginning. I got to get back to God's original intent. I got to, I, I, the only way, that is the only way I can love my wife as Christ loved the church. That is the only way. There was a level of conversion that had to take place in me. God would always give me words and he would always show me destiny. He'd always show me and remind me, even through somebody else, what he's called for me and my wife. But over the years, I've been the biggest hindrance to our relationship because I was stuck in myself. I love my wife, but I was stuck in myself. I love my wife, but I was built. I built my principles and built the model according to my desires when we understand the intent of God in creation it is only revealed in creation and throughout creation you see God 
redeeming man back. Redemption, restoring means restoring it to its original state. How is it that you can go buy a new car for a hundred thousand, but get you a nineteen twenty classic? Cadillac that's been restored it'll cost you 200,000 what God is trying to do not trying what God is doing now is restoring us to our original purpose he's restoring us to our original mindset he's restoring relationships to his original intent and relationship from the beginning was built on unconditional love forget about all of the models all that you have experienced in relationship all that you have seen Every relationship that you look upon and you say, man, that's a good relationship. I'm a model my relationship after that. I want my relationship to be like that. No, you don't. When we want to see perfection, perfection is only in God and in creation. What was present in relationship was unconditional love. What was present in relationship was covenant. And that's what God is calling couples back to is true covenant. And this is the thing when we get it apostle. That the covenant that we have with God. The covenant that God has with us because we don't have a covenant with him. The covenant that God has with us is a unilateral covenant. It's a covenant from him to us. And God declared that I'm going to do this. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to prosper you. That you are mine. That you are chosen. He gave us a covenant in him. And he said this to me. He said too often in relationship. We're looking to get out of. To get something out of the relationship. When we should be focusing on what we can give. And he says if we focus on what we can give. Then we will get more than we ever expect. You got to see two people that within a, in a unilateral covenant with God. That say God I want to please you with my whole heart. So therefore you teach me how to love my wife. And it's not about what I do to get something from her but I, 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 what God what have you placed me in her life to get to her because if, if my focus is to get to her her focus is to get to me and in the end we're going to get more than we ever expected from each other because as we are in relationship our relationship we're doing relationship as unto God and not unto man so we gotta get people of God it was built on blessings relationship before the fall was built on acknowledgement and responsibility I'm going to go through these real quickly. It was built on purpose and assignment. It was built on fellowship and provision. Commitment. Communication and order. It was built on honor. Desire for God. And fellowship. That was the model. That the rest of the world was supposed to duplicate the relationship from God to man. 
And then we have children and we teach them the ways of God and we teach them the voice of God, the knowledge of God and we raise them up in the things of God and when they get married, they teach their children, they marry somebody who knows that is how the earth was to be. But we know there was a fall. That's the original intent of God on the establishment of mankind. I'm almost done. But after the fall, relationship was established on conditional love. Conditional love is what what most everyone in the room, you married who you marry by what they could do for you. Conditional. I, I'm not saying it's wrong. Me and my wife together the same, for the same reason. It was conditional love. She brought something to the table. I brought something to the table. What she brought to the table was great enough to get me, get us to get married was a baby. But it's based on conditional love. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm just trying to show you what happened after the fall. Marriage now was based on contract, not covenant. Now, when we marry, we have to sign a contract. We sign our names to a contract. But when we did, when Adam and Eve, when God created them, there was no contract that was covenant. Now we got to have paper and sign a contract. And because the fall of man now, covenant really don't exist. It's contract. And if you can take a, if you can sign a contract to get in it, you can sign a contract to get out of it. But when God signed and stepped his name on covenant, there's no way out of covenant. There's no way. It doesn't matter how you treat me. It doesn't matter how you do. God says, I'm still going to love you. There's no way. He has no way out of his covenant. And I'm glad about it. There's no way. It's no, it's, it's no contract. Because contracts are based on stipulations. And we build our model. Because let me help us. We build our model of relationship after the fall deception the enemy what, what did he do to Eve so what was planted the seed of deception see what I'm talking about here every single relationship every one of them I don't care who you are I don't care how long you've been married and what you survived and if you got a good marriage Every relationship was after the fall. Unless we had the revelation that we have to get back to the original original plan of God. Every single relationship. My wife, we've been married 26 years. Our relationship was built not of ourselves. It was before we ever got here. Conditional love, contract, deception, disloyalty, sin, disobedience, moral corruption. The lack of accountability. Blaming each other. What, 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 did, what did Adam do? It's, it's the woman that you, you gave me. This, this man brave, he blamed God. For the, for the short, shortcoming. Every single relationship after the fall, it was built on a lack of responsibility. It was also because if you read, you got to read, you got to read it now. Now, after the fall, Jesus, the, uh, God cursed him. He said that your desires will now be but your husband and he will lord over you. That, and that's what the word said, right? Yeah, read it. It's in there. That's where people get that from. That's where they get it from. When they talk about the man ahead and the man they get it. They talk, they speak, talking according to the curse. I ain't saying it's bad because one thing about the word of the king, once the word of the king go out, it is established. 
right? So Jesus, even his apostles, when they're talking in the book of Ephesians, talking about loving your wives, and talking about uh, talking in Ephesians chapter five, loving your wives as Christ loved the church, and women submitting yourselves to your own husbands and hum- humbling yourself before your husband. Why? He because he couldn't. Because after the word was spoken, spoken, then it is what it is. But in the spirit realm, that might that's in the natural, but in the spirit realm, we're equal. That's why God said to me and my wife when we were talking, He said, I got to restore the spirit of marriage. Yes. Yes. Not just the principle and the practicality of marriage, but I got to restore the the spirit of marriage. Listen, toil, one of the part of the curse, he said, because you have disobeyed me, in toil shall you bring forth. Toil, what does that mean? That according, by the the sweat of your brow, by your own hands, you shall bring it forth. Toil, you're going to have to work hard for it. But also, after the fall, they were banished from the place of Eden. The presence of the God, provision. Anger and disappointment. Jealousy and selfishness. Because when we see as, as Adam and Eve had children, we know the story. Cain and Abel. Jealousy. Cain killed Abel because he was accepted by the Lord and received and his offering was received so he was jealous of his brother so every relationship the seed of jealousy has been planted the seed of murder because he killed him and also the seed of exile because after Cain killed Abel. He was sent out. But Jesus. That, that, listen. That, that's, that's, that, that, that part right there is not to get you. It's not to uh, uh, cause you to worry. Uh, but I, I come to encourage you. But, but Jesus came to restore said there must be a lamb that must be a sacrifice and 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 jesus said that i will go redeem them back under god and jesus came and died and paid the price so we could now be restored have the opportunity to be restored back to our original place and purpose of dominion and now we have people that are saved and on their way to heaven loving God, preaching and serving in church and raising children that are establishing marriages according to the fall of man. That's why you're having so much problem. That's why there's so many problems as it relates to relationship. Because relationships were established according to the blueprint that had been established. So God said this to me three weeks ago. And I said to the Lord, if there is a message that I am to preach all around the world, it would be this message to the church that it is time for us to circumcise our hearts. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse number 16, God told us the children of Israel, I have all of these promises and blessings for you chosen you in me but I need you to 
to circumcise your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse number 16. Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. Could it be the way that you are and who you have created yourself to be, your likes and your dislikes as it relates to relationship. Could it be that it was built on the principle of the fall? Could it be because if, if, if we haven't been restored to God's original intent, then our relationships have been built on principles of the Father. If it's about you and what you can get out of this and he can't please me and she can't please me, that's according to the Father. Disloyalty, according to the Father. Thinking it's always got to be your way? Fall. You say, but you operate in according to the Father. You love God. And you even think about in your mind, God, we love you. Why? It's not our relationship better. Because of the principles and the foundations that you're operating it on. It ain't going to ever change. Until. Circumcised. The foreskins of your heart. I've been laying before God and I say, God, whatever I got in me that was by my own hands, the decisions that I made, circumcise my heart, God. Circumcise me, God. I, I, I don't want to be this way any longer. I, I don't want to walk according to the shortcomings. I don't want desires that are not of you. God, circumcise my heart and everything that has been imparted into me that's a seed of the fall of man. I want to be rid of it. Last scripture and I'm going home, I promise. Second Corinthians, y'all know this scripture. Circumcise my heart. Now some of you have been saying, man, this is the way I am. But if it's just the way you are, that means it's not like Christ. If you're still operating in your own ways and you marry, that's a problem. There is no way, I'm going to say this, there is no way to have a successful relationship, a purposeful relationship in this earth realm without God. Amen. It ain't no way. You could be married, yes. You can have children, yes. They can go, you can raise them, they go to college, yes. That's fine. And that's great. But the purpose that God originally, the three most single, listen to this, because I say you always have to go to the beginning. The three most single and most important relationships on earth. Number one is God's relationship with man. The relationship between a husband and a wife and relationship uh, with their children. Three single most important relationships. Why do I say that? Because look at creation. What was established first? I'm not saying no other relationships. Spiritual mothers and fathers, pastors, and I'm not saying those relationships are not important. I ain't saying they weren't important. But, but, But the fivefold ministry gifts, Holy Spirit said to me, like the apostles can get me later. 
But the fivefold ministry gifts that God gave to the world, it was a part of God's restoration plan to restore man back. This is the part of his redemption. See, I have to watch what I say carefully around religious people. If religious people, because they, you know, they'd be ready to kick you out of church. It's a part of God's redemptive plan. Our churches will be stronger and vibrant and flourishing and prosperous. If we work on those three, relationship with God and man, relationship with husband and wife and children, our communities are influenced greater by those three. Second Corinthians chapter five. Come on, baby. Listen to this. And I say this with our folks. When the word of God is written or the word of God is being read, I have no opinion. I have to put aside everything that I think or anything that I would even consider that doesn't go along with word. I have to literally shut myself down to experiences and what I've seen over the years what I've experienced even in church when the word of God because the word of God is the first and the final say listen at what the word says I know you've read this scripture many times I had too many years 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse number 17 therefore if anyone is in Christ He is a new creation or creature. Right? Do I have any opinion about that? So what what am I to do with that? Receive it. So if you are in Christ, the Bible declares that you are a new creature. Right? Amen. Okay, amen. I got it. Therefore, if anyone be in, is in Christ, he is a new creature. Listen what happens when you become new. All things are passed away. So how I used to do relationship? Immediately at that point, the Bible declares that all things have passed away how I if we were married before before I got saved and really got serious about the things of God how I loved her before passed away <laughs> why because I'm now in Christ old things have passed away behold some translations right there say now Behold, all things have become new. So if we're in Christ, and being in Christ gives us the advantage of becoming a new creature, why are we going to walk in a disadvantage operating under our own knowledge I had to admit to myself 
after many years of marriage that I really didn't know how to love my wife. According to God's model. To man's model, do pretty good. But according to God's model, I'm coming up a little short. That's why my prayer for the church, for every husband, every wife in this room, is that you would allow God to circumcise the foreskins of your heart. For every one of you in the room understands circumcision. And it is significant when God gave it to me. It is significant because we understand that when God established a covenant with Abraham. He told Abraham that I'm establishing this covenant with you. But I'm requiring something of you. That you and every male child eight days old and older. That they be circumcised. And the circumcision is going to be a sign that you belong to me. That I am in covenant with you. So now, in the spirit, God, I'm saying to you as a sign that I belong to you. Circumcise my heart. From all of the failures and the disappointments that I've had over the years. Some of you in the room, some of you ladies, you're married now and you love your husband. But you truly don't trust him because he let you down in your time of need. Because you came to him and you were pouring out your heart. Or you was pouring out your heart to your wife. And they just didn't seem to get it. Uh, understand and you held it against them you've been faithful but yet there was distrust because the house got foreclosed on because you lost the job and couldn't find one quick enough Because I told you you need to spend more time with your son. And and now he's out there doing this and that. And I blame you for it. God, I need you to circumcise my heart. I, I, I saw my mama. I saw my daddy cheat on my mama. I saw my daddy beat my mama through years. And I said I would never subject myself to a man that beat me. But yet, it was in my heart. And even though I made decisions to not be that or do that, I still carry the scars of the experience. God, I need you to circumcise my heart. Some of you weren't raised by your parents. Giving up at a young age. You always held it against your parents. Circumcise our heart so we can be free to love. I don't know about anybody else in the room, but I just want to be free. I've read it so many times in the Word where the Bible says in John chapter 8, Jesus says, Whom the Son, the Word says, Whom, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I just want to be free. I don't want to carry around the bondage of the experiences that I've seen. The people that I've hurt. The people have hurt me. The hurt that she has experienced. The model that she has experienced. So God, today we're coming to you. And we're saying, God... Stand to your feet. I need you to grab the hand. Your husband and your wife. If they ain't here with you, hold your hands. Something. 
Just grab the hand. Come in, come into connection with somebody next to you. God, Father, we've been preaching. We've been prophesying. We've been in marriage for a long time. But we've been carrying around a lot of baggage. We've been carrying around a lot of hurt. We've been carrying around a lot of disappointment. A lot of times we were let down, God, by people. They had good intentions, God. Some of them had bad motives. And they set out to hurt us. And they accomplished it. Some of them didn't really mean to hurt us. They didn't know who they were. Because they didn't know who they were, they couldn't treat me like I should have been treated. Father, I'm praying for healing right now all across this room. I'm praying for healing all across this room, God. Every relationship, God, every person that is married right now, God. Every model that we have built according to the fall of man, God. I'm asking you right now, God, to tear it down, God. That we would tear down all of the idols that we have set. Some of us have set and established hurt and deception as an idol in our heart distrust as an idol but God today we're pulling it all down and we're coming into alignment with you and Father I say every person in this room that you would circumcise our heart I don't want to be this man anymore I don't want to be this man that the world created I don't want to be this woman that society has created but I want to be the man that you created me to be I want to be the woman that you created me to be and I want us to come together as one and fulfill your great command and that is to rule and reign together dominion and establish the kingdom in our sphere of influence I pray for every marriage God God you know everything that we've been through all that we overcame and today God we're bringing it to the altar and we're laying it down we're asking God that you would circumcise the foreskins of our heart and cut away that which is not needed cut away all of the hurt and deception cut away all of the experiences God that damaged us and allow us to be brand new today Father we don't want to be old wineskins expecting new wine but we want to be new wineskins because you only pour new oil in new wineskins Father I pray that today that every person under the sound of my voice 
that they will see relationship and marriage in a whole new light. That you will take us back, God. Take us back. Take us back. Take us back. Take us back to our first love. The first love that man ever experienced was your love. Take us back to that place. Jesus. Jesus, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray.